welcome. In today's episode, we finish our long-awaited bathroom renovation that literally saved us thousands of dollars and improved the look and the value of our house. We're going to show you a lot of tips and tricks and how to do the final touches that will add value to your house and will make your DIY project look professional and be absolutely finished. So stick around, this is going to be a fun episode. Good morning, good evening, good night, good afternoon, based on what time you watch it. Welcome to the Urban Homesteading Channel with Professor DIY, Mrs. DIY and Elpida, and we are back in the never-ending project of our bathroom. Today we are going to end that project, we're going to finish, put the fin final finishing touches on our project, and we're going to show you how that entails, and then we're going to, to be, do the big reveal, so you can see. A couple of things I want to say through in the beginning, and, and Mrs. DIY, please um, chime in here, is that this project took far longer than we thought for a couple of reasons. We couldn't do it in continuum, right? We worked on it on weekends. That was number one. Number two, there were unexpected surprises. Maybe we'll talk about them when we do the review, what we didn't expect to happen. And number three, anytime you plan, the bigger the project, the bigger the delay. So if you're thinking like, if you plan two hours, calculate three, something like that. Or four or five. <laughs> if you plan five days, calculate seven. So overall, on the time we were using, working only, not calendar days, do, do you think we worked five days on the bathroom? How long do you think it took us? So if you wanted to calculate the time, if you have the time in continuum, it, will, it seemed like it took much longer for us than the actual work time, but part of it was some, some choices we make. For example, the pebble floor in this flower looks very amazing, but it is very time consuming. Uh, you know, square tiles would have taken really infinitely shorter period of time. We changed the tiles on the floor for that reason. There were the smaller tiles, went to a little bigger tiles, but even that was a long time, right? Yep. So the materials make a difference. And if it doesn't matter, I mean, think about it. If they put pebble, if you hire someone, they will charge you more because the labor is more. It's not more just for us. It's just a more in labor intensive thing, right? Yeah. If you put just big slabs down, that would be faster. Much faster. The floor was way faster than the shower. Right. So consider that as well if you, if you take this project on by yourself. In any case, you are our favorite viewer and stick around because we are going to show you a very exciting project finish. So what we have to finish? We have to finish the trim. Most of it is up, but we have some final details yeah. and we're going to show you this process, of course. Particularly right here around the closet. These were kind of last minute cuts that we ran out of time, but they're definitely necessary for a finished project. Right. We're going to hang the two doors. Hang the two doors. Or one, at least. Definitely we're going to hang this door, right? Yep. yep. This we may or might not hang. We'll see. And anything else? I think everything yeah, else is we done. We have one little... Um, I think we showed you this on the video when we installed the vanity. Um, it was a very, very snug fit. And, to, you know, there's not precise measurements on walls. Walls aren't always straight. And we did nick that um, trim that we had already installed. So we'll need to address that. We need to unnick it. Yep. It's nicked now, we need to unnick it. So let's get started. And this is going to be a very fun episode. So let's take inventory of what we have to do. We have the big piece in the closet already cut, but we need to cut the side pieces. And the, in essence, what's the front of the closet, right? I don't know right. what it's called. And then we have those two corners, right? And we have a nice, Oops. nice large piece. It's confusing, isn't it? When you look into the camera. We have a nice large piece. We are confident we can do all of this. All right, so. We need uh, something to mark. We have a small piece in here that we will use for something of a minimum of something, right? We won't. We'll try not to waste any of it because, you know, there's no need. And Well, and it's it's a very small area to cover. All right. So we're going to, to do some measurements, go and do some cutting, and then we're going to bring the equipment here to touch it. Now, if anything, it's better to... Be a little proud than short, right? Right. You cannot make short. And yes. we're basically talking about a quarter of an inch here, right? right? So this so. is a, not a miter cut. This is a bevel. Bevel, yeah. Thank you. We 
it's a little okay it's a little too far so back here on the saw for those of you who may not be experienced with this type of saw there are markings or those of you that are experienced that cannot <laughs> look. okay there are markings here that tell you what degree you're cutting it at and we okay. want it at a 45 so now we're gonna tighten it back here okay and it's critical that you have the face of the board back or front in the correct um, orientation. Orientation, yeah. right. So we have to do it the way it was before. So where you marked it. A little more towards me. Probably there. But I want you to move your head this one a little further away. Okay. Ready? Mm -hmm. A nice, please cut, clean cut. We just hope it's the right dimension, right? Yep. Okay. So now we're going to go and test the fit. Now, there will be a lot of back and forth that we're not going to show you because it's just boring video, right? We have to go, dry fit it, make sure it, it is okay, measure the other piece, dry fit it, start attaching, but it's better to be a little proud and, and chip away than too short. We only have one piece. I think we have plenty even if we make a mistake, but we only have one piece of trim left, so we, we need to be fastidious, not fastidious. I, I don't speak English today. <laughs> we need to be careful not to waste it. How about that? Right. Okay, excellent. So as you can see, we cut it uh, a little too proud. Yep, because we were measuring for the back, which is longer than where we cut it. So it's almost, you know, a quarter of an inch, maybe even a half an inch too long. But uh, we'll, we'll need to correct that. Okay. See how it's sticking over by about... A quarter of an inch, maybe a slightly more. Mm -hmm. Okay, so back to the saw we go. So most saws have a way to adjust the how true the angle is that you're cutting. Mm -hmm. and so again, this is the locking lever. And you can see there is a scale here. And when we go to 45, the stop is a little... I don't know, is it good there? Or? It's short, so we need to raise it up so that the, yeah, so that... So how that works is there is a screw, there is a stop screw. Right, just there. And what we have to do is just raise that screw so incrementally, incrementally, incrementally up. Incrementally, yes. So the saw will stop exactly at 45. Mm -hmm. And again, here, consistency is more important than uh, accuracy because we want all our cuts to be the same. Mm -hmm. So which way? Again, you want to come righty to raise it up a little bit. Sorry for the bad camera work, people. Here we are, just trying to show you where we are. Okay. Also ensure you independently check the angles in case the scale is wrong. A little bit closer. Try again. You can do go crazy with this. Very incremental yeah, changes. Just a little turn as you start adjusting. Oh, maybe we're going the wrong way. Go the other way. Yeah, because that's up. That's up. More. Lefty Lucy is going to bring it up. We're getting closer. Righty tighty is what's going to take it down. It's getting there. Bring it up more. More. One more. We are almost there, like another... It's okay to be a little short. Come on, just one more. No, it's preferable. It okay. makes a better uh, corner. All right. So you can see that we are... We're just beyond that line, but we are much closer than we were. So now we have our angle corrected. We also were longer. I want to be shorter. We're past 45, right? Yeah, we're okay, just that's a what I, It's better to be... Okay, but... um, one more little turn, I think. Now we're okay. like between the last tick and the 45, so we're just shy of the 45. Okay. Is that what you're looking for? Yeah. 
okay? Excellent. So now we're going to continue making incremental small cuts until we, we have the cuts that allow us to have a perfect fit. So this is a dangerous cut because the, the small pieces are really not very safe to cut on a mitre saw. So. so we are putting pressure here so we will not be holding it with our fingers, right? Mm -hmm. And the direction is if the piece flies, we just let go, hands away from the saw, right? We okay. don't try to save the piece, okay. okay. The main reason accidents happen is because people get startled. So do not get startled, be prepared. And again, as we said in the directions, if something goes wrong, let go of the piece. Your safety deserves it. Okay. And that is how you make an unsafe cut, safe cut. We are ready to install the very last piece. And of course our compressor came on, but here I am in the closet. I have one last piece that's gonna butt up against the trim here and then go into the 45 angle with the, uh, the, last, the previous piece I put in. And it's gonna hopefully just slide right, up, right in and butt right up. Um, can't be too concerned about little gaps uh, that you see because we'll fill that in with silicone. And now, just gonna attach it. And that's the last piece. So now the, the, what we need to do is make sure that all these um, trim nails are all the way seated and then put some silicone on. So we are going to attempt this damage that happened when we were moving the to cabinet in here. We're going to attempt to repair this damage. Right. And you've already got the profile set here so that when we bring it across, it's going to make it match. Okay, you're, you're in a hurry. There are two ways to repair this. The first one is just paint it and hope no one will notice, right? Sure. But we're going to the, to the hard way, which will make it worse first before it makes it better. And that is we're going to put a uh, wood putty in there and then the tool that LP that showed you is going to allow us to replicate the the curves profile yeah so that is the plan let the games begin you need to be patient here and do this process in stages if you do it one to all together, it will not be successful. So take your time and do it as slowly as possible. So here the idea is that you are higher than the profile, right? Mm -hmm. So the tool can go through and... Is it pliable enough? So it's very pli pliable because this is brand new. Okay. So we'll let you do that. Otherwise it's like putting too much. So we have never done this, right? Mm -hmm. This is going to be our first attempt, might be our last attempt. We've never used this tool either. Mm -hmm. So we might end up scraping it and just painting it. <laughs> mm -hmm. But what I think I have to do, because this was pretty a pretty good gouge, is like put a layer on, let that dry some, and then start building it up. Because if you can see, I don't know if you can bring the camera close enough to see that the... Yeah, I'm zooming actually. That the difference in the profile, there's, there's quite a gouge here. So we're mm -hmm. going to have to build that up. Okay. As we said, this repair will look worse first before it starts looking better, right? Mm -hmm. And some repairs are like that. But again, it doesn't have to be perfect. No one will be on the floor looking at it. It has to be good enough that when you sit from a distance, you know, five, six feet, the average height of a person. Mm -hmm. Okay, in your case, four feet. Uh, it looks good, right? Mm -hmm. That's the importance. So this is a sort, a small, a sort space, a small space, <laughs> and we need to be working on multiple projects at the same time. This is DIY is going to start doing some caulking, and um, this is Alpida is continuing, and that is uh, a kind of a slow process. You build layers. Don't try to put like a big blob all at once, right? Yep. So I've I've put three layers on here at this point, um, and it's just about at the right like depth here mm -hmm. and I should be able to run the profile I'm gonna let it dry a little bit and then run the profile down again and then we'll be able to let it dry and sand it just to smooth it out a little bit all right and as you can see the silicone is doing a very very good job making this perfect any gaps disappear both in the corners and on top 
And it is the preferred way of doing that, right? There is impossible, especially in the older house, but every house will have uneven walls. You will never be able to find a wall that's so perfect that your team has no gaps. That is never going to happen, right? So get used to use a very expensive application tool that's called your finger and spend some time getting very intimate with your trim. So Alpida, how about this tool? By the way, we're not sponsored by Johnson, which is the manufacturer of this tool. Um, I like it. It definitely has the correct profile. It looks like the, I didn't set it, but it looks like the pins are real easy to set. Um, Mrs. Dear, why you set it? How you found this tool to set? Yeah, it was really easy to set. Okay. okay. Um, that seems to do a really good job. And then for our purposes, it's definitely created the profile that we're looking for. And now you see where you're not that close. You, it yeah. looks like... Uh, yeah. I mean, it depends on how much detail you want to spend, but from a distance, other than the color, the profile is there. Yeah, and so now it's just, again, allowing this to dry completely, coming back with a little bit of light sanding, and then we'll be able to paint, and you probably will never know it was there. Because our tunnel wouldn't be our tunnel without light sanding. Yes. <laughs> so our next step is to hang the door back and... Um, We'll try to show you that this is a very tight space, so that might be a little difficult, but we'll do our best to show you how we do that. Okay, so we are reinstalling this closet door. We are starting with the middle hinge to help provide some stability for the other two hinges. All right, now we'll do the same on the other two hinges, one screw just per hinge. One screw per hinge just to get that. Oh, back, back that way. A little more. I cannot go anymore. Oh, there. I cannot see what is the problem. It's just aligning the opening there. then this bottom one should just go right in because everything should be yeah. fairly well placed, right? I don't think it's correct, no. So, because it took us that long to, to get to this point, we actually face a little bit of a, a challenge, I would say. We forgot that we need to cut the door because the tile sits tight, higher than the linoleum, what we had before. Yeah, it was linoleum. So we're going to remove the door again because now it is kind of stuck, it doesn't go anywhere. We're going to remove the door, cut it a little bit and bring it back. So before you start cutting your door, make sure you're cutting the correct side, right? Mm -hmm. We need to cut the bottom because the top is fine. The bottom side is where we added the tile. And because these are hollow doors, you cannot cut too much. Mm -hmm. So we will see how much we cut. Do we have an extra tile somewhere? We'll probably cut the tile length, a uh, tile width, I'm sorry. Depth, oh, whatever you want to call yeah. it. Yeah, okay. So we're going to find an extra piece of tile and mark where we need to cut it. So we're getting ready to set our track for the cut and we're going to use a tile piece that we cut from our tile to decide how much we're going to remove. So we're going to have this plus with the bottom. Mm -hmm. And then we need to make sure that we are uh, square too. Mm -hmm. Let me move this down, and it is flush. Okay. Way across. Okay. Okay, hold on. Tighten your clamps. Uh, I need you to hold that so I can do the clamp. Check again, just to... I think we're good, right? Yeah, looks good. Want to check, Mrs. Gateway? Are you getting bitten? Yep. Here we go. Well, you would have thought, but uh, is the did the.
to mess it up. Yes, it is. Correct. It does leave quite a bit of mess. So now the door should be able to clear. Yeah. So and hopefully we won't have to do any more cutting. Yeah. All right, here we are, take Hold two. On. This is not correctly. All right. Okay, focus on the middle, please. Now put the, 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 the hinge first in, not the screw. Have made that uh, approximate quarter inch cut off the bottom. It's a very clean cut. Oh, with that cracks out. Oh, I got it. Okay. So now with the screw per skins, we can make sure it operates correctly. And that's why we only put one to start with, right? Because mm -hmm. you don't want to take all of them off. Okay. And the door does not hit anything. And we have a successful installation. Now the next step is to go and put all the screws on all the, the hinges. So six more total. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. So the last bit of trim work that we need to do is up here at the top of our shower stall. And so we've made some measurements. And we're going to go cut those pieces and come back in and check for fitment. Okay. So this is that piece, right? Yep, on the left is the okay. longest piece. Do we want to check it before we proceed? No. for our three pieces that we need. And as you can see, we got the most out of one piece that we could. So there's just that little bitty piece. Yep, that's it. Um, and now we have the third piece. And we will cut the final piece, which is our back piece, because we've cut the left side and the right side. Now we're just going to do the back. Don't record, just help them work in right now. Okay. It's ready to do. Piece. Yep, the back piece. We're going to go and see how well they fit. Where you're putting the nail, make sure that the nail is straight off so you don't hit it and break the tile. Above where your hand is so you will not go in. So. patient like me you will not like that you have to wait for this to harden enough to reach this point which is a little bit of sanding or a lot of sanding I don't know how much sanding do we need I don't think it's going to be as much as you think and then just a double pane and we'll call it done right yeah 
But you can clearly see the contour of the thing, you know. It's mm -hmm. I think it, it is a great repair. And now we're starting the, the beginning of the end, right? The beginning of the end. Mm -hmm. amazing amount of paint again this if you don't want to make a video and post it on YouTube it's something you can leave last for small touches right touch-ups yep. on your paint but we want to show you the final outcome of this and I can tell you already from this distance you would not know it's perfect mm -hmm. excellent and 39 years after we started, <laughs> the end. We finally have a, a totally remodeled bathroom. Again, if you look around, you can see our repair there, if you remember from the beginning. Mm -hmm. It is definitely, in fact, I think, if you walk, you wouldn't no notice anything. We know it's there, and you know, right. our eyes is drawing there, but other than that, the, the trim looks perfect everywhere. Mm -hmm. So we finish all the trim, as you can see. First we put the towel hangers, we didn't show you doing that, but we did it. Mm -hmm. We did it when you were not looking. We reinstalled this door, obviously. Yeah, and we put the trim up and that looks perfect. So, okay. this is what we've worked for, right? Right. What you, we have learned. Uh, every DIY project you ever take on is going to take longer than you think. And if it is, the longer it is, the more longer it will take. <laughs> yes. The more better, right? <laughs> more better. Uh -huh. Definitely we have some challenges in this project, right? Yes. And a lot of them, if not all of them, were things that other people did wrong. Usually now, it was us trying to correct right. other things. Except this one, because we did that. Yeah, right. We did that in trying to install this. Just because it was such a snug fit. It yeah. was an unbelievably snug fit, but... But it worked. <laughs> and, and this bathroom looks brand new. It looks awesome. Yeah, it's amazing. It looks really, really good. We love it. So we hope you enjoyed this episode. And if you did, we'll appreciate the thumbs up. If you didn't, hit the other button twice. Share, like, subscribe. Let us know, do you like episodes like this? And do you like the tips and tricks we show you on how to do things in your house? From Professor DIY, Mrs. DIY, and Elvida, let's remodel something together.